In a world where everybody talks about cards like the Amex Gold, City Premier, and Chase Sapphire Preferred, some other types of travel cards get kicked over to the back seat, namely hotel cards like the ones offered from Marriott, World of Hyatt, and Hilton. And that begs the question, are hotel credit cards worth it? You're about to find out. Hotel credit cards are generally bad for three main reasons, namely earning rewards on everyday spend, saving rewards long term, and flexibility. On the flip side, hotel credit cards are generally great for four main reasons, specifically earning hotel points fast via welcome offers, obtaining elite status by default and via spending, paying for nights directly at hotels, and free night awards. And for everybody else who'd like to learn more about this, along with some really, really great examples, the rest of the video begins now. We'll begin by talking about the main reasons why hotel credit cards are generally bad, the first one of which was for earning rewards on everyday spend. Here on the screen we've got four really well-known hotel credit cards, specifically the Hilton Honors American Express Surpass card, IHG Rewards Premier, Marriott Bonvoy Boundless, and World of Hyatt. And here are the rewards multipliers for their main spending categories. The Hilton card will give you 12 points per dollar when you spend at Hilton hotels and resorts, 6 points per dollar on dining, groceries, and gas, and triple on all other purchases. The IHG Premier will give you 10 points per dollar at IHG properties, 5x on dining, travel, and gas stations, and triple on all other purchases. The Marriott Bonvoy will give you 6 points per dollar at Marriott properties, triple on dining, grocery, and gas, and then double on all other purchases. And finally, the World of Hyatt card gives you 4 points per dollar at Hyatt properties, 2x on restaurants, airline tickets, local transit and commuting, and fitness club and gym memberships, and then one point per dollar on all other purchases. But here's the first tricky part. One point in one program is not necessarily equal to one point in another program. So here are the average values you may be able to anticipate getting for each one of these programs. Hilton points have an average value of around 0.5 cents each, same with IHG points. Marriott comes in at around 0.7, and World of Hyatt comes in at 1.5 cents per point. And that brings us to our second tricky part. Because we have different points with different values and different cards with different multipliers, we've got to even the playing field by putting them in cashback equivalent terms, even though you cannot redeem your points for cashback. Basically, we're looking at the return on spend you'll be able to get if you were earning cash back. So to do that, we're gonna take the average value of these points and multiply them by the actual category multipliers, and here's what we get. In the far right column in green font, we now have the percent return. So the Hilton card gives you 6% back at Hilton hotels, triple on the middle categories, and one and a half on everything else. The IHG card gives you 5% back at IHG properties, two and a half throughout the middle ones, and then one and a half for the base rate, while Marriott comes in at 4.2% for its properties, 2.1% for the ones in the middle, and 1.4% back on everything else. And finally with Hyatt, it's 6% back at their properties, a 3% return for those middle four categories, and then the base rate of 1.5%. All right, now that we've laid that foundation for these hotel cards, let's bring these flexible travel cards back in the picture and run through that same procedure to get everything on the same playing ground. That is the return on spend for these cards, and then we'll put everything side by side. Here are the four flexible flexible travel cards that are not tied to any specific program, specifically the City Premier card, American Express Gold card, Chase Sapphire Preferred, and Capital One Venture. Here are the reward multipliers for the different spend categories for all four of these cards. You'll notice a lot of them are kind of similar in a lot of ways to the hotel cards. I also do want to point out here that the MX Gold, I'm adding double points on travel via the portal. That's because whenever you have an Amex card that earns membership rewards points, Amex gives you one extra point when you book through their portal. That's not unique to the gold card. It does hold true to all other personal and small business American Express cards that earn membership rewards points, but I just wanted to point that out for this comparison. For the point values on these cards, we're still going to be using averages because the redemption method that we're keeping in mind here is transfer partners, and when you go from one program to another, it can have a wildly different value. So that's why we're using an average. And because a lot of these do have overlapping partners and a lot of good options, we're going to have an average value of 1.7 cents per point for each of the four main programs. And finally, doing that same math as we did earlier to get our percent return, we've got those in the far right column in green. The City Premier card comes in at a return.
return of 5.1% for restaurants, supermarkets, gas stations, air travel, and hotels, and travel agencies, making a great all-in-one card, and then 1.7% on its base rate. The Amex Gold will give you 6.8% on restaurants and groceries, as well as 5.1% on flights, 3.4% on travel via the Amex portal, and 1.7% on all other purchases. The Chase Sapphire Preferred at 8.5% for travel via its portal, 5.1% on dining, online grocery, and select streaming, 3.4% on other travel outside of Chase's portal, and the same base rate of 1.7%. And then the Capital One Venture there at the bottom with 8.5% back on hotels and rental cars through the Capital One Travel Portal, 8.5% back on Turo through May 16th of 2023, and its base rate of 3.4% on all other purchases. It's now time for the Mega Merge to put these cards side by side and see who wins. We've got our hotel cards on the left and our flexible travel cards on the right. I also put all the rewards multipliers in terms of their cashback equivalent, or in other words, their percent return. You'll also notice that I've color-coded them to where they overlap either directly or in a very similar way. For example, in that light purple color are all the hotel categories, but for the flexible travel cards, they also included uh, the purple color for travel because those include hotel purchases. Now, since we've got so many different cards and categories here, we're going to actually put these in terms of their average return per card, taking into account all of their categories. So here we go right now, bringing in a couple more columns for the averages. The Hilton card comes in at 3.3%, IHG at 2.8%, Marriott at 2.38%, and Hyatt at 3.25%. Over on the right-hand side, we've got the City Premier at 4.53%, the Amex Gold at 4.76%, the Sapphire Preferred at 4.82, and the Capital One Venture at 6.98. So first observation here, the flexible travel cards destroy the hotel cards for their everyday spend return. For the most part, we're talking about things like gas, groceries, dining, etc. But for a lot of people out there who travel a lot for work, like I used to do, one, two, three, even up to four trips per month, uh, when I had that lifestyle, I was spending way more on travel than I did on the necessities at home. So your own everyday spend might be different and therefore weighted uh, much more strongly to one side or another based on the categories where you spend your money and your budget. Still though, it's interesting to note that the highest overall average return on the hotel side, which was the Hilton card at 3.3%, that's still worse than the lowest performing overall average on the flexible side, which was the city premiere at 4.53%. Another observation I'd like to make here is that some of those averages are held up disproportionately by certain categories. For example, the Capital One Venture has some really strong 8.5% categories, but those are all travel related. So if you're a really heavy spender on groceries, for example, that card may not be that great for you. So always keep in mind your own spend habits. All of that considered, if you're like most people, you probably spend a lot more time at home than you do at 35,000 feet in the air. So if that's your case, then again, the overall average return on spend for a lot of those useful daily categories is way better on those flexible travel cards. Allow me to briefly interrupt my own video because we're talking about multiple credit cards here with different point systems that can be pretty confusing to manage. So if you want to make your life a whole lot easier, check out today's sponsor called Matt's Rewards to help you out in a huge way. Matt's Rewards is an app that allows you to manage your credit cards, rewards, and benefits all in one place. This includes seeing when your bills are due, tracking your sign-up bonuses, monitoring your credit scores, and more. On the Activity tab, you can view the transactions across all your cards to easily see where you've been spending your money, including the value of the rewards you've earned across different categories. Then the Best Card tab helps you identify which card to use for different purchases. That way you can earn points or cash back even faster. And perhaps my favorite feature is the Benefits and Offers dashboard, which you can unlock with the gold level of Matt's Rewards. You might be familiar with Chase Offers offers, Amex offers, Bank of Merit deals, and others. Each time you sync the app, all of your offers will be activated automatically, including the hidden ones from Amex that you didn't even know about. In fact, my Amex Gold Card showed 162 offers that were ready to go thanks to Matt's Rewards. So if you'd like to try Matt's Rewards, use the link down below in the description to get the Gold level entirely free for your first month. And now back to where we left off. 
Moving into part two of the bad news, hotel credit cards are generally bad for saving rewards long term. Y'all better prepare yourselves for this one. Disappointing, huge IHG Rewards Club devaluation. Marriott Bonvoy devaluation, how bad will it be? Brutal, World of Hyatt's 2023 hotel category changes. Hilton Honors increases points costs at top hotels. Wyndham changing award prices at 800 hotels. See what I mean? The reason why saving hotel rewards points long term tends to be a bad bet is because many of these hotel programs are subject to things like devaluations, frequent changes, dynamic pricing, and lack of award charts. Devaluations simply mean that your points are worth less over time, or in other words, you'll have to redeem more points for the same night at the same property in the future than you do now. Regarding frequent changes, that of course can mean a whole bunch of different things as new properties are added to a hotel loyalty program, other ones are removed. Uh, perhaps even a greater example is the overhaul of the IHG program that we saw pretty recently where IHG pretty much changed everything. Dynamic pricing means that the price of a room can change or fluctuate at pretty much any given time just like the cash rate. So as an example of that, here is the Waldorf Astoria property. It's called the Arizona Biltmore out in Arizona. And you can see the standard nights are all 90,000 points per night, which is pretty nice to have that standardized. But once you get into the premium room rewards, those are all over the place. 255,000, 206, 578, 603, and 606. And about those award charts, well, here's an example of the old Marriott award chart. It just started out pretty much with the standard and saver rates there in the middle. They later added off-peak and peak pricing, and now the entire chart is completely gone. Now on to part three of our not-so-great news, where hotel credit cards are generally bad for flexibility. This is due to the fact that the points you earn are only really valuable for hotels in one program, where on the contrary, the points earned on those flexible travel cards can be used for virtually any hotel, airline, rental car, etc. via the Bates travel portals and also be transferred directly to a variety of hotel and airline programs. Here's a little example of that. Across the top of the screen, we've got those four hotel cards with some arrows pointing down to the programs in which you can redeem your points. To put things simply, you can redeem your Hilton points for hotels that participate in the Hilton Honors Program, and so on and so forth down the line. But look what happens when we bring in those flexible travel cards. With the City Premier on the bottom left, you can transfer directly to Choice Privileges and Wyndham Rewards, or also use the portal for pretty much any hotel you like. With the Amex Gold, you can transfer directly into Hilton Honors, Choice Privileges, and Marriott Bonvoy, as well as access the portal. The Chase Sapphire Preferred allows you to transfer right into the IHG One Rewards program, Marriott Bonvoy, and World of Hyatt, plus access to its portal. And the Capital One Venture Rewards card allows you to transfer straight into the Accor Live Limitless program, Choice Privileges, and Wyndham Rewards, plus its portal. Once again, I've also color-coded the overlapping programs across those four cards. Okay, so we've talked at length about why hotel cards are not so great, but now let's pivot on over to why they are potentially worth getting. Again, there were four main reasons. Here they are on the screen again, and we'll discuss now the first one, which is that they are great for earning hotel points fast via welcome offers. This is the quickest way that I'm aware of to get a lot of points in a very short period of time to pay for a trip. And these welcome offers uh, you get from opening a new card account typically come in the form of spending X dollars in Y time frame. So let's check a few of these out. Here's an offer for the Hilton Honors Surpass card to earn 150,000 bonus points after spending $3,000 in the first six months. Here's another for the IHG Premier card to earn 175,000 points after spending $3,000 in the first three months. And another for the Marriott Bonvoy Balance to earn 100,000 points after spending 3K in the first six months, as well as the Hyatt card to earn up to 60,000 points broken into a couple different tiers. All of those offers can be worth hundreds of dollars toward hotel stays, and to be able to get that much value within just a few months is really incredible. Reason number two why hotel credit cards are so great is that they allow you to obtain elite status by default and or via spending. For instance, that Hilton Honor Surpass card gives you automatic gold status every year just from having the card open and a path to spend your way up to diamond. The IHG Premier gives you automatic platinum elite status with the option to spend toward diamond in that program. The Marriott Bonvoy Boundless gives you automatic silver with the ability to spend up to gold as well as 15 elite night credits every year automatically 
and the option to earn one additional Elite Knight credit for every 5k spent on the card. Furthermore, the World of Hyatt card gives you automatic discoverer status, also the ability to get 5 Qualify Knight credits every year automatically, and to earn 2 more Qualify Knight credits for every 5k spent on the card. Reason number 3. Hotel credit cards are also great for paying for nights directly at hotels. To show you what I mean by this, here are all 4 cards across the top with the point multipliers in white font and their return on spend in bold orange font. Then bringing in the flexible travel cards doing the same thing with their multipliers here, I put all the ones in orange representing where you pay directly with the hotels on, for example, Marriott.com, Hilton.com, etc., and not through a portal like Expedia or Kayak or any of the hotel portals. So when it comes to paying directly, those hotel cards destroy the flexible travel cards, with one small exception here with a Marriott Bonvoy Boundless card. The one that beats that is the City Premier. Uh, very slightly, not a huge difference, but again, if you're paying for uh, cash for a Marriott hotel, you might actually be better off paying on the Premier from City. That said, I also included the portal rates for the flexible travel cards on the bottom there, as long as they are uh, eligible at this moment in time. So Amit's there at 2.4%. Those must be prepaid, by the way. Uh, for Chase, it's 8.5% via that portal, and same with Capital One on the Venture. The downside about using a portal is that many times you will not have your elite status benefits recognized, you also will not earn credits towards status, and you also will not earn points in that hotel program. So there's a lot of potential value lost in those reward programs, but if you don't care about those elite benefits or hotel points and you just want to have a great return on your uh, credit card itself, then going through the portals is no problem at all. And again, you'll get uh, some of that value recouped by those higher rates of return. But now I invite you all to remember something. A lot of these hotel cards also give you automatic elite status to some level. So if we include all the automatic levels, into this overall equation because elite status usually allows you to earn more base points per dollar spent anyway that changes the equation even further so here's where we left off with those hotel cards on the top getting six percent five four point two and six percent respectively but now bringing in those automatic earning boosts we now have 10%, 8%, 4.9, and 6.75. And that thoroughly destroys all those flexible travel cards for hotel spend. Now last, but far from least, because this is one of the best overall hotel card benefits, is the ability to earn free night rewards. So, beginning here with the Hilton card, you can get one night every year, and you must spend $15,000 per calendar year on your card to earn it. While that's definitely a steep price to pay compared to the other cards, it does have the most valuable overall certificate right now in that it has no limit to the overall value. And because it's so great, there's no additional perk beyond that. Moving down a row to the IHG Premier, you can also get one night every year with no spend requirement, just have your card open and pay the annual fee. This certificate from that card is worth up to 40,000 points, and you can, as an additional perk, combine it with an unlimited amount of points. Jumping down to row three for the Marriott Bonvoy Boundless, you can also get one night every year with no spend requirement. It's valued up to 35K points, and you can combine up to an additional 15,000 points for an overall redemption value of 50,000 points. And fourth, with the World of Hyatt card, you can earn up to two free night certificates. The first one has no spend requirement. The second one requires spending $15,000 in a calendar year, and they're both redeemable for category one to four properties. That is up to 15,000 points maximum. There's no additional perk beyond that. And that is everything you need to know about hotel credit cards and whether or not they are worth it. Obviously, the answer is yes and no based on the circumstances. So here's an overall summary of all the main reasons that we covered in this video. Feel free to pause it if you want to remind yourself of what all of them were. And having gone over all that awesomeness, if you enjoyed today's video and believe it could benefit other people, then please help me get it in front of them by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and turning on those notifications. Also check out the links down below in the description area to earn some more cash back when you shop online through Rakuten. To sign up for Matt's Rewards, which is a great app to manage multiple credit cards, rewards, and benefits all in one place, and to view my site with some great credit card offers
cards that I've organized into different categories to help you find the cards that you like best. Also, if you enjoyed today's exercise and you wanna see me do this same type of process with airline credit cards, I did another video about that right over here. So feel free to watch that one as well. I'll link it down below in the description, as well as one of the end cards. That way, if you wanna go click on it right after this one's finished, you can do so. I thank you all for watching today's video. Hope it brought you some tremendous value. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And while you're waiting for it to be uploaded to this channel, always remember that you are great.